Hi there, it is uh, April 16th, 2020. My name is Sean Wilsey. I'm the geology professor at the College of Southern Idaho in Twin Falls. Uh, and I wanted to put together uh, another little video update on some of the aftershocks that have been going on in northern Utah. I've got some family down there. Uh, some people have been a little bit concerned, obviously, and understandably so, with the, the current pandemic that we're going through. I um, want to especially uh, give a shout out to all the the hardworking folks that work with my sister at the Ogden Clinic. Uh, appreciate all you're doing during this this time and all the sacrifice and effort you're putting putting into our health and well-being. Uh, appreciate that. So this is just a little way of me giving back and hopefully putting putting some people's uh, uh, fears at ease and maybe calming some nerves a little bit here. So um, so most of you know that we had uh, a, a large, well, moderately, sorry, mo moderately sized earthquake on March 18th in northern Utah, just west of Salt Lake City. This was a magnitude 5.7 quake that was felt uh, throughout the uh, northern Utah region. Uh, this simple map here uh, from the University of Utah uh, Seismograph Station Network shows the location of that earthquake in yellow. And then all the red dots here are all the earthquakes and all the aftershocks that have happened since that main uh, that main earthquake back on March 18th. And so the size of the red dots corresponds to uh, the magnitude of the quake. Uh, and so you can see all of these. And this is current as of, um, uh, let's see, uh, Wednesday afternoon, so basically yesterday. So this is uh, almost a month's worth of aftershock activity. And uh, by no means try to count all these, but this, this corresponds to about nearly 1,200 or 1,300 or so aftershocks since that time. That may seem like an alarming number of aftershocks uh, for, for an earthquake, uh, but this is actually quite normal. Most of these circles, as you can see here, are quite small. Uh, and so many of these are very, very small, undetectable to people, so people didn't feel these. But there have been a few that people have felt, including one um, on Tuesday of this week, which was a 4.2. There were some people that felt that in northern Utah. So again, um, probably uh, reasons to kind of to be um, on edge, but I'm here to co hopefully put your 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 fears at ease a little bit that these this is a normal uh, sequence of aftershocks for this size for this size of earthquake. Um, I can tell you that the earthquake aftershocks will diminish and have diminished over time. They will also diminish in terms of their size. Um, and we can see that here, if we kind of switch now from this map to this simple graphic that the University, University of Utah has put together. Uh, so these are the dates. Here's the initial uh, main shock up here. So we've got magnitude over here on this axis, and we've got all the dates, right? So this is time, and this is uh, every day since uh, the March 18th earthquake. So there's the big earthquake on March 18th, and then you can see all the aftershocks. So they're just sort of all clustered in here. And then each vertical line here is a different day. So here we are the day after, so quite a few aftershocks. Here we are, you know, a couple days later, so on and so forth. And what you can see is that the total number of aftershocks has uh, dramatically decreased over time. Uh, furthermore, the size of the aftershocks has generally decreased as well. So this thing would have looked probably pretty smooth had we not had this one little outlier here, this 4.2 uh, aftershock on Tuesday, April 15th. That kind of caught everyone's attention again that, oh boy, we're, we're, we've still got earthquakes to think about. Uh, but for the most part, this is a, a pretty normal distribution uh, and frequency pattern that we would expect to see with an earthquake of this size. So uh, we'll see how this goes forward, but uh, just, just again, hopefully putting people at ease a little bit with the, the pattern and number and frequency of uh, earthquakes um, aftershocks that we've had after this initial one here. Um, so hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, uh, what else can I share with you here? Um, um, let's see. Um, I've got some things here. Well, let's let's start with the obvious one. I guess if you watch, if you you're plugged into too much social media, uh, you can get very alarmed by these sorts of things. Uh, so I would encourage you to like find good sources of information, um, reputable scientific sources, people who actually understand earthquakes and know what's going on. Um, going to someone's Facebook page where they're convinced that Yellowstone's going to blow uh, probably isn't going to help you feel at ease at all. I can tell you that there's absolutely no connection at all with the earthquakes, the earthquake in Utah and its aftershocks 
the earthquake in Idaho that happened um, uh, on March 31st and its aftershocks. No correlation whatsoever with Yellowstone. Yellowstone is acting normally. There's a volcano observatory there. Um, of all the things to worry about in life in terms of things that might get you, uh, Yellowstone erupting is really, really low on your list. It's down there below lightning strike. Okay, um, so hopefully that helps a little bit there. Uh, all this being said, um, if you do live in the northern Utah region, realize that you live in an uh, earthquake prone area. Um, there is still a risk. There was actually a study done in 2016 by the USGS uh, that put the probability of a magnitude 6.7 or larger quake in the next 50 years, uh, somewhere in the Wasatch area, at about 43%. So nearly a 50-50 chance that in the next 50 years there will be uh, an earthquake of about magnitude 6.7 or greater. And that would be much larger than this one we had on March 18th. Uh, there would definitely be a lot more damage and probably fatalities and, and casualties involved with that. So. Um, so what should you do if you live in northern Utah? Well, um, you know, don't go bury your head in the sand. Uh, don't uh, maybe try to flee the, the area. So you just need to realize that, hey, I live in an area with uh, an earthquake hazard. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure I'm prepared. I'm going to maybe look into earthquake insurance. I'm going to uh, look at the geology underneath my house. I'm going to look at what kind of house I have and how it's built and how it responds to uh, seismic shaking during an earthquake. Um, I'm going to make sure that I've got emergency supplies on hand. I'm going to make sure that my family and I have some sort of plan where if an earthquake occurs, uh, we have we know what to do. We know where to meet. We have sort of a uh, we, we've drilled this thing. I know what to do when an earthquake begins. I'm not going to go stand in a doorway or try to run out of the building. I'm going to if I'm inside, I'm going to drop and get underneath a table or a desk or something sturdy, and I'm going to hold on. Um, so just again, knowledge is is the way to combat. Uh, you know, paranoia and fear and panic, right? So if you know a little bit more uh, about uh, earthquakes and how they behave, uh, then you're less likely to fear them. Um, a good example would be uh, people who live in Kansas uh, and experience tornadoes on an annual basis probably have a good idea of what to do and probably, uh, you know, not that lives aren't lost there, but they, they know what steps to take in order to maintain their safety. Uh, so earthquakes are no different. Uh, realize that a bigger event, like a magnitude 6 or 7 earthquake, is going to be less frequent. It's going to take more time for the Earth to generate enough energy and stress to create something of that size. So we have lots of small earthquakes, not so many big earthquakes, uh, and that's true for almost all of Earth's processes. So um, hopefully that helps a little bit. I wouldn't worry at all about the, the aftershocks. Those are normal. They should decrease over time. Uh, there's a good chance you won't feel uh, very many moving forward into the future uh, from this initial quake, but you should still be prepared for. This, is, this earthquake is a good reminder of people in northern Utah living in an area with a sizable and significant uh, earthquake risk. So this is your little warning shot across the bow that, hey, maybe you should make sure that things are prepared such that if there is a larger earthquake, uh, that you can handle that, that things um, don't have to be catastrophic and, and awful, that you can actually uh, deal with that if and when that occurs. Um, so hopefully this was a little bit helpful to you. I'm going to put, uh, uh, there's a great pamphlet about living in earthquake country and, and what you should do and how you can prepare for it. I'll put that link uh, with this as well, and hopefully people in northern Utah can look at that. Uh, but continue to um, uh, relax a little bit with the earthquake risk. Um, uh, be safe and just keep uh, doing what you're doing and uh, help educate other people out there as to what the real risks are and what the facts are. Thanks.